Hello and welcome to STEM Scientists. Today we're going to be learning about snowflakes and then creating a snowflake. And I wanted to start by reading you a story that is called The Story of Snow. The Story of Snow, The Science of Winter's Wonder by Mark Casino with John Nelson, PhD. Our story starts on a winter day, high up in the sky in a cloud that is very, very cold. This is the story of snow. Snow begins with a speck. Clouds are made up of air and water, but there are also bits of other things like tiny particles of dirt, ash, and salt. Even living bacteria can float in the wind and end up in a cloud. A snow crystal needs one of these specks to start growing. These specks are all much smaller than the eye can see. When a speck gets cold enough, water vapor will stick to it. If you had a microscope that could see such small things, here is what you would see. Water vapor sticks to the cold speck, making the speck wet. More water vapor sticks to the wet speck, forming a water droplet. The droplet freezes into a ball of ice. More water vapor sticks to the ball of ice and it grows into a hexagon-shaped ice crystal. Water vapor continues to stick to the crystal. Faster growth on the corners causes six branches to sprout. The branches keep growing, sprouting little arms of their own and a beautiful snow crystal is born. As the snow crystal gets bigger and heavier, it starts to fall to earth. It keeps growing as it falls through the cloud, taking on its own special shape. The shape depends upon how wet the cloud is and how cold it is. A snow crystal can start to grow in one way, but then grow another way when it passes through a wetter or colder part of its cloud. The crystal stops growing soon after falling below the clouds. One common snow crystal shape is the star. Star-shaped snow crystals usually have six arms reaching out from a center point. The center point is the home of the speck that started the crystal. The six arms look alike, but they are almost never exactly alike. Plate crystals are thin, like star crystals, but they don't have arms. The simplest kind of plate is a hexagon with six straight sides. More complicated plates have points where the arms almost grew. Simple plate crystals are much smaller than stars. They can be as wide as a millimeter, but usually they're a lot smaller. The points on this plate crystal are the beginnings of arms that were just starting to develop when the crystal fell out of its cloud and stopped growing. Column-shaped snow crystals are shaped like pencils. They're not flat like stars and plates. Columns can form high in the clouds at very cold temperatures. They're very tiny, and when they fall, they make for slippery snow. A column has six sides, and these are the three types. Six is the magic number for snow crystals. This is because of the nature of water. Water molecules, the smallest units of water, attach themselves in groups of six, which usually leads cr to crystals with six arms or six sides. Snow crystals are rarely perfect. So much can happen during a snow crystal's fall to earth, it is rare that one will turn out perfectly. If a droplet of water passes close to an arm of a snow crystal, that arm can start to grow faster. Before long, that one arm will be longer than the others. A snow crystal can even have 12 arms. This is a twin crystal, which happens when two crystals start to form from the original speck and form on top of each other. A snow crystal can have bumps. If there are enough water droplets near the crystal, some can strike the crystal and freeze on contact, and this gives the crystal little bumps called rime. Often, snow crystals bump into each other and get stuck together. When this happens, snowflakes form. Hundreds, even thousands of snow crystals can be found in a single snowflake. Once a snow crystal lands, it starts to wither away. Snow crystals can't keep growing after they fall from the clouds. And when a crystal stops growing, it immediately starts to wither. Soon the arms of the crystal break down and the crystal's shape becomes rounded. This means if you want to see a snow crystal, you need to catch it in the air or find it very soon after it lands. Try catching one on your sleeve or your glove to see the crystal structure at its best. So are no two snow crystals alike? Some simple plate crystals may appear exactly alike as seen through a high quality microscope. When it comes to more complicated snow crystals though, odds are that no two are exactly alike. But then no two leaves, flowers, or people are exactly alike either. Snow crystals are like us. We're each different, but we have a lot in common. Now today we're going to be making a snowflake project and the first thing that you're going to do 
is to create a hexagon in the center of your page. And you can do this several different ways as I've shown you with either a full hexagon or two trapezoids or three parallelograms or six triangles. Then find the six points of the hexagon and start making legs off from each of those points to start your snowflake legs. Continue extending the legs of your snowflake until you reach the edges of your paper. When you're all done, you should have a fantastic looking snowflake to put on display. When you're all done, tally up how many of each shape you used and either include it on this tally sheet or on the graph. Links to both of those files are down in the description box. Now I'd like to give credit to Malia from the STEM Laboratory for today's STEM idea. You can check out more of her projects over at the STEM Laboratory.